All right, so we're post Christmas. I hope everybody had a great holiday. And I am on the final strategy of my 25 days of Christmas. And I took a couple of days off. This is important. I wanted to just make mention of this really fast because I think it's important as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, um, you know, go getter and stuff to always be ambitious with, you know, your, you know, aspirations, you know, the goals and uh, things that, the vision that you have for your business or brand. But I think. Uh, when it comes to the holiday season, when it comes to being cognizant or aware of what's going on around you, that's just as important. You know, if, if you're losing employees, if, if uh, you're losing touch with your wife or you're, or you're not around for your kids and stuff and you're hustling and hustling and hustling, that can be more impactful uh, in, in the long run uh, than any short-term strategy. And I didn't run into anything myself uh, personally that caused me to have this realization or just reminder right but I think it's, it was important for me on my final day I wanted to get it over with and I found myself sitting there uh, realizing I wanted to prove this to the handful of people that even tune into this that hey I'm committed that I'm gonna do this you know for you and I wanted to, to, to actually take a step back and say hey I want to prove something to my family I want to prove something to my wife and my kids here during the season that I don't need to push forward 100 miles an hour in order to prepare for 2022 or set set us up for success in the future and i think sharing this message is just as uh, valuable or um, important as finishing that 25th day so anyways i made it almost all the way through and i think uh, that's something i'm really proud of i think it's something that really stretched me um, during a busy season right that a lot of things are going on i just moved to a new place um, new season just got a couple dogs myself and i'm not getting much sleep and so it's just like, you know, really sitting and being honest and vulnerable about things, I think are just as important uh, and can be just as an effective of, of a strategy, uh, you know, leading with that type of stuff. So with that being said, for the 25th strategy of my 25 days of Christmas, I drew something that is not um, really something I really wanted to do, you know, to be honest with you, because... Uh, it's not really an ideal client, number one. Number two, it's not something that is really holiday themed. And number three, uh, I think it's a really high um, high volume referral business. Carpet cleaning. So for the 25th day, the final day, you know, drum roll, the most exciting day of the month is carpet cleaning. So I just kind of drew it right now, just came out here, put a Put a bucket down here on my back porch and really thought here for a minute you know how am i going to do this how am i going to position this how do i make it sound good and you know i i just wanted to jump on here and just just start going just start um brainstorming on this start talking to you about some of the things that were already on my mind and see where it goes so carpet cleaning you initially think who needs that stuff during the holidays right um maybe people moving out um maybe college you know we're thinking college uh, end of semester teachers maybe uh, people that have extra time that are off school you think immediate, I immediately think of students um, but then it's just like do you target students do you target that stuff at, at college campuses and stuff to clean the carpets so they get their uh, deposit back or do you do a campaign for their parents right because in most cases they're either on scholarship or somebody else is funding their schooling and I've been a college student we don't really care it's like you don't really can't really conceptualize the fact that they're gonna charge you like I just got charged for my last rental like $700 for something that the previous person they had a cat and then I they found it when I moved out anyways that's kind of a fresh memory there I immediately think of move out you know carpet cleaning service most people do that when they move out uh, maybe when you have a pet if you do have multiple pets that's something that you invest in again this isn't something I'm an expert at I would be if you hired me as a carpet cleaning company to find that out to come up with a strategy that speaks to people in all their needs, uh, not just the obvious ones that the carpet's dirty, dirty, but the hidden ones, uh, as far as maybe mites or pests or dander or uh, dust or pollen or other things that could be hidden, feces maybe in your carpet that maybe you want to do that once or twice a year. You know, um, that's a hidden need. I, I personally didn't know that until I sat down with a carpet cleaner, right, and asked them a couple questions. Um, so it's not a sales pitch, right? They're not telling me you need to do this. You ought to do this. You know, I don't like the you oughtas. They're not trying to sell me on anything. They're educating me and letting me know, hey, this could be in your home and this could impact your health and your children's health or your now your puppy's health, right? And that's going to speak to me. So 
those are the type of people I think that care about not only the aesthetic appeal of their home, keeping it clean, uh, presentable, uh, welcoming, right? Uh, that type of environment that people are comfortable in, but also they care, right? They care about their stuff. Uh, they don't want to get charged a fee when they move out. They uh, don't want to get sick. They want to protect their kids. There's all these reasons why you get the carpets cleaned other than just being unsightly. It's dirty, you don't care. Carpet cleaning commercial or a guy or service or anything is not going to speak to you because, you know, if you lived on dirt, you'd probably be fine. Me personally, I could live on a dirt floor. Probably wouldn't be amazing, but <laughs> my son. Um, I don't really care, but I have to consider those in my household and those that stop by and, you know, the type of uh, experience I want people to have in my home, right? I think that's, that's, that is important to me. So I guess maybe I, I would care. If I lived in the dirt floor, but maybe some of you don't even can don't even think that way. Walk through something because you're just like, yeah, you know, I don't need it, I don't want it, I don't care. But maybe you do. So that's you know. So we kind of walked through this kind of the ideation phase of, of of a marketing campaign or TV commercial and try to understand what are the hidden um, and what are the hidden obvious needs, and then what is the value of the service. And then how can you educate people? What are some types of things to educate people on? And then now we want to try to tie, tie in the holiday season. So what what actual events, what actuality can we tie in? There's my puppy in the background that you can hear. My son, conveniently, I took him out here as I'm doing a video live. Um, so I got all hardwood floors, by the way. So as my brain's getting back on track here, I don't really need think too much about carpet cleaning because all my carpets upstairs dogs aren't going to go up here but educating me on certain things or helping me understand what I may run into or what potential problems I could have down the road just by not paying a hundred bucks or so to get a half of my house uh, half the square footage of my house carpet clean um, you know that stuff can go a long way my point is um, so trying to tie in the holiday season, I'm sitting here thinking, uh, obviously a lot of people selling houses right now, a lot of people moving, uh, maybe moving states, coming to new areas, that, that could obviously be a, a big uh, revenue stream, right? But I'm thinking, um, you know, to tie it in with the holidays that maybe we, we focus on the parties or the gatherings, or if you're hosting, right? Not only do you maybe want to clean the carpets before, I think um, you can really give people a paradigm shift even because my, my wife's very big on when we have company over wants to clean the house and then when they leave it's just like mm, we won't do as good of a job cleaning now that they're gone and and I love her for it because I'm not trying to deep clean everything uh, and I'm not necessarily saying she's wrong it's just I'm I'm saying the way people think um, can sometimes be strange so you want to or or different right unique we're not all the same so me personally, I'm gonna to wanna to clean up after people leave because I don't know where their shoes have been, what type of pets they have, where they were before. I know where all my family has been. I'm not too keen on deep cleaning like I said before, but I also wanna make sure my house is healthy, if that's the right word, um, providing a good wellness environment, we'll say that. And uh, you know, it's not nasty, it's not gross looking um, when I walk up the stairs. Um, so I'm thinking, Probably something that you may have to talk people into or educate more often than other things would be the cleanup after the holiday party. A lot of people prepare, which was my point, to have company over to make sure that people are comfortable, that, oh, wow, I love your house, it's so beautiful. You know, you're not wrong for that. I mean, it's okay to have some pride in, in the place that you live, but it's probably gonna be a lot more valuable to clean it up uh, after people leave after there's a lot of foot traffic, after you maybe have a showing, after you have an estate sale, something like that, um, which was a good example of the house that I live in now, that they got the, the carpet clean and everything, then they had their estate sale, trampled it up, and I told them they needed to get carpet clean again. Uh, you know, I didn't really shop around, I just wanted somebody that's gonna do a good job. But if you have, all of a sudden have that need and all of a sudden this need arises, and then you have this brand recognition, a stuck in your brain about a good commercial that somebody had that resonated with you um, that makes it an easier decision hey I I found this person or I found this company a couple weeks ago a couple years ago and now all of a sudden I have a need and all of a sudden my whole family decides to come out during my live video no big deal just think on my toes here and um, uh, you know they're like oh 
there's that company, uh, Scrubbers or uh, Upholstery Sparkle or something like that. This, this company that I saw this commercial and I'm gonna call them right now because it's fresh in my mind. I had a good experience, good first impression and I trust them. They gave me some really good information and it stuck with me, right? There's people that could see a multitude of carpet cleaning commercials in their life and then when they need, they could live in the same house, right? Their whole life. And then when it comes to a need, they may shop around because they don't have that trust. They don't know what to do and nobody took the time to educate them. So, um, you know, I'm thinking we're already at almost 11 minutes here. So uh, dancing around all that type of stuff, I'm sure you guys come up with a couple ideas because you're different than me just in general. I'd love for you to share them below. But I also, um, I'm thinking that trying to educate something, people in general, consumers on something that is relevant during the holidays is gonna be the most important sticker. And, um, but that could be difficult. Again, we could have different type of parties. We could have different type of gatherings. We could have a rave in the house, right? We could have just somebody playing cards. You could do all different types of things to paint different types of pictures and to resonate with different types of people or to reach them. But I also think that you have to do something extra um, on top of the education. So um, Christmas, um, let's start with, let's, let's start with like colors. Uh, when we're eating, what's, what's, what are popular dishes uh, for the holiday season? We'll even go back to Thanksgiving, that, that you don't want to hit the carpet, right? Um, like cranberry, cranberry sauce, cranberry juice, Kool-Aid, coffee is probably a big one. Um, desserts, really colorful, bright, colorful desserts. Um, so what, what if we just like, this might be random, but like just focus everything on red and green that's the christmas color so what are like all these different types of things that are red and green so red cranberry we got cranberry uh blood <laughs> blood uh kool-aid um uh spaghetti sauce pasta sauce right those that that would be terrible getting that on the carpet um uh, food coloring right you're making cookies there's red is just probably the worst you know that's that dye that stains right popsicles all these different things if maybe you're in a cold environment you don't have popsicles during thanksgiving and christmas but maybe you're in in florida or maybe you're in the caribbean uh and you know you maybe got a property down there so maybe that's the type of people you want to reach you want to reach the ritzy people that have these amazing properties in different places that would be a great idea to get a nice little uh, personal carpet cleaning service um maybe have to fit the shoe would have to fit but my point is there's tons of red stuff that can get on the carpet that dies maybe have some sort of like um classical music like piano do, 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 like really intense of of like a fantasia uh orchestra type thing of all these things hitting the carpet and i'm pretty sure you it's probably like a bounty commercial already like that you know the quicker picker upper that that sticks right <laughs> Just think about that stuff, guys. Like, you need to clean something up. You want to get some paper towels. You run the store. You're gonna go with the quicker picker upper, probably because it's stuck in your head uh, over the same brand that has the same soak power. Anyways, um, that's the power of advertising. I hate hate to use the word power. Effectiveness of advertising. If you're able to tie in a message uh, that that people can remember in a catchy phrase that's not just a sales pitch that means something to somebody, then it it's great uh green stuff um so let's think you know spinach green beans um uh jello jello pudding uh you think of stuff like that like cakes um what else is green? throw up maybe some poop right some nasty poops some green stuff maybe you just had a really um uh, a vegan christmas and your poop's bright greens maybe that's on the carpet <laughs> maybe grass stains just think about this stuff uh, on the shoes right uh, all my point is I can come up with a bunch of different ideas um, you know even down to f the fruits right there's just different things that'll stain that's green it's nasty maybe a little bit yellow we could throw yellow in there too to just either way we got red and greens clashing on the carpet and it's unsightly it's nasty it's sticky um, your carpet cleaner is not gonna get it out you're it's uh, you don't know how Maybe you hire a steamer, walk through this whole thing. It's not coming out. Dun, dun, dun. The carpet cleaning guy's here uh, to save Christmas. And he shows up in a, hey, we haven't really used Santa a lot. He shows up in a Santa suit, right? Pulls up in his sleigh with all these tubes coming out of it from the North Pole that suck up your yuck. Suck up the yuck. 
with Santa. Um, I try to think of a catchphrase right off the top of my head there, just to, you know, put a cherry, a cherry on top of this 25 days of Christmas. I feel like I really got to blow this out of the water. Um, and I'm already at 15 minutes. I think I'm running out of time and I'm reeling a little bit, so I don't want to drag this out. But, you know, I think that if we really were able to sit down with each and every single one of these companies or businesses or industries that I've talked about over the last 27 days now, because I missed two um, this past month, I think it, um, we, will, we would find something that would really really hit home with a lot of different people and uh, that's what this stuff is that's what pre-focus is all about that's that's why you do this stuff that's why you hire somebody that can help you walk through it that's why you don't just listen to somebody and have them tell you what type of ad campaign that you need to run or what you ought to be doing or or to copy your competitors it's having a lot of success because you don't have the, that you don't have the talent that, that your competitor has you don't have the people that they have you don't have those personalities right you don't have that culture that that aura. and if you are trying to duplicate that why just go in halvesies with them and, and join a franchise. Like, what's the point of duplicating somebody else's experience, values, and work ethic, or uh, equipment, or, or or message, or whatever the case may be? If you're not being original with stuff, people notice. It's so noticeable when you see even a pest control company that I've I've followed this one pest control company in Phoenix for years. Yeah, I don't even really know if they do a great job. I never even hired them because I had my guy. But man, they have this experience that they got it down. Uh, they got clean outfits that are branded that look good um and it, it just nails home this first impression like that you know you, it's hard to ignore and it's hard for people that pay for it to forget and so when it comes to stuff like carpet clean services it's no different you you maybe find somebody that has a coupon in the newspaper that you can get twenty dollars off or maybe they do an extra room for free but are they doing a good job are they deep cleaning it are they uh you know making sure all the pollen and the allergens are gone. Are they pulling the carpet up? Is there things underneath there? Are there certain things in red or uh, red dyes or, or foods or blood uh, that can create other problems? Uh, are there other tips and tricks that, that you can give people to help clean their carpets just for little you know spots here and there, uh, spot cleans, that maybe take away from your business, right? But you're providing enough value that it's establishing trust, right? You're eliciting a memory another memory with all these type of marketing efforts and a lot of people don't like to give away free stuff like that's basically what I'm doing right now but they don't understand the impact that it makes down the road and if you're the expert no matter what business that you run if it's cleaning carpets it's cleaning carpets and floors um, people need you people people want to ask you but they also want to be able to trust you and they need to be able to trust you and once that's established once there's faith in your service, once there's quality seen there, right? Um, once you're memorable in some way, shape, or form, uh, it's pretty much a wrap unless somebody else is just is really hitting it home too. So think about those things. First impressions are everything. Like I said before, people don't necessarily know they need carpet cleaning services or they don't even want them or don't even care. But when they need them, they need them. Uh, so if you're able to be front and center in their brain, you know why wouldn't you do that and in, in most cases I mean you really reflect on something like this five thousand dollars for a video six thousand uh, dollars in two years can really maybe drive home and you think even if you sign up ten new customers that clean their carpets every year um, and they say maybe it costs two hundred dollars right it's two thousand dollars so um, just in one year from one ad so over five years there's ten grand you made your return you don't have to make your return back right away guys you don't you don't have to get an ad strategy for five grand and then make ten and you think that's a win that's a two to one that's terrible three to one is like a baseline if you're not making at least three to one on your ad spend then you need to find a different way to spend money or stop spending money <laughs> I, I did a blog five years ago that uh, there's tons of things to do for free to market your business this is one of them talking showing showing your knowledge showing your experience showing your passion showing that you're fluent in the things that you know and you're able to teach it and that you care you know you can't you can't fake that stuff by looking somebody right in the eye and being able to tell them or phone here on my post uh, maybe it's it's a little easier when nobody's sitting here but it's not no, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say that because doing a video is tough doing a video makes it vulnerable especially live like this you can mess up you can put your foot in your mouth you can maybe show some a part of yourself that 
maybe you think that you shouldn't show people, but everybody is a person too. The guy that needs his carpet cleaned, maybe he, he cussed at his dog earlier in the day and stubbed his toe or something. I don't know. I mean, he's not perfect. And nobody's perfect. And, and if you expect people to see you that way, you're setting yourself up for failure. Because as soon as, for failure, because as soon as you do drop the ball and then you want to cover it up or you're so worried and insecure about it, then you, you, you lose every time. And people can notice that and see that. When you're able to fail forward and say, you know what? I'm going 100 miles an hour, I messed this up. I'm sorry, I'm gonna make it right though. And I'm gonna keep doing uh, what I've been doing this whole time, providing the same amount of value that I've been providing this whole time because that's what I'm here to do. There's nothing else. And any, no matter what business that you run, that's where it's at. If I can help people um, iron that out, get on the right track and stay consistent with that, um, you don't have to spend tens of thousands of dollars on marketing. The word of mouth takes care of, uh, of itself. So um, I think that'll wrap, kind of wrap it up there. You know, that would be a, a decent, decent commercial to do for carpet cleaning. I'm sure we think of something better, but Christmas themed Santa to the rescue decked out truck kind of looking like a sleigh uh, a really good logo really good slogan that's on the side of the truck if you didn't have one we'd probably we'd probably have to come up with something that wouldn't be holiday themed but all that stuff that stuff's important we got to be able to it's got to be cohesive and uh, I guess I'll leave you with that marketing sales branding they're all different but they have to be cohesive if they're not cohesive you're everything's a sales pitch Okay, so um, I might do some follow-up videos here because I just I had some uh, cool experience just in the last two days that I really wanted to do a video about and kind of cheat and say, hey, uh, you know, this would be a good industry to do, but I'm not going to do it. So maybe I'll continue just for a couple more days. We'll see. I haven't got a lot of return or, or uh, recognition even, uh, awareness built by this yet, at least. Uh, Instagram seems to be throttling things a little bit, but... Uh, I know this will catch somebody's eye, this, this type of stuff, and uh, hopefully even if, if none of the industries that you're in, um, hopefully if you're watching this and none of the industries that I talked about were yours, that I hope you're able to take something away. That's what I was trying to say. So be purposeful with everything that you do, guys. Almost 23 minutes today. Thanks for staying, hanging in with me, and always remember to pre-focus.